This is a very frequently asked question, a common objection to cryonics, that it will increase population problems. I don't think this is a big problem because, first of all, it would have a trivial impact on overpopulation. We're able to handle more of a population. Population growth is actually slowing down. And in fact, we should be worrying more about underpopulation in the future. So the first factor is that assuming cryonics works and people will eventually be revived, the effect on population will be trivial. And thus cryonics, of course, becomes vastly more popular than it is right now. Currently, the percentage of the population with arrangements for cryopreservation something like 0.00004% of the population. Does that sound like a massive problem to you? No, we could become a thousand times larger and still have a trivial impact on population. So it's really not important. And if you think about it, how good an objection is that anyway to cryonics? You can make the same objection to using vaccines, statins to lower your risk of heart attack. After all, if you die earlier, it helps to reduce the population. Maybe we should get rid of all those public health measures that prevent people dying of infectious diseases, uh, and cholera, cholera and dysentery. Maybe we should stop trying to reduce infant mortality rates, all of which are contributing to uh, population a lot more than cryonics possibly could, especially actually by reducing infant mortality because they will grow up and have children themselves. So by this logic, presumably, we should encourage infant mortality. Nobody wants to do that. So the effect of cryonics will be very trivial. But even if population does continue to grow, as many people assume, into the indefinite future, I think we can handle it. We're learning to make do with more with less material. There's actually a dematerialization of the economy underway, where many of the things we do every day involve fewer physical resources. The actual number of physical pounds of weight per dollar, or per real dollar of US output has been declining for decades. We spend more and more time telecommuting, doing things online, rather than driving or building large devices and machines. Our cars use less materials than they did in the 60s. Just compare the weight of a car now to one in 1960. So overall, we're using fewer resources, and I think that's a trend that can continue, especially with appropriate policy incentives. So we can handle more of our population. How much more of our population do we have to consider? And what if cryonics really did become popular enough to actually make something of a real impact on that population growth? Well, population growth has been slowing down for a long time. And a lot of people aren't really very aware of that. They may have that vague idea in certain parts of the world. But the fact is that, yes, we've had a huge population growth in the last 100, 200 years, but that's been slowing down greatly. Fertility levels have been declining all over the world. In some parts of the world, the effect is quite drastic. Places like Japan are facing a shrinking population right now, as is Russia and the entire part of Eastern Europe. Large other parts of the world are seeing population either slowing down drastically or actually coming to a halt and beginning a population decline. There's a long list of countries, and you can look at official UN sources on this, many more countries that are reaching that level where they'll stop growing and start shrinking. Even surprising places like Italy, with a strongly Catholic population, you would think they would have large families. In fact, they're below replacement level. They're having fewer children than they need to maintain the current levels of population. And that's a pattern we're seeing everywhere, even in the poorer countries, which are the ones that traditionally have had the largest population growth. Uh, so really, it's not the wealthy countries that are adding to population, it's the poorer countries. But even those, even in poor parts of Africa, compared to the 1960s and 70s, we're seeing drastic declines in population. This seems to be an inevitable fact of increasing economic growth. The wealthier people become, ironically, the more expensive it is to have children. Children aren't, aren't these producer goods anymore, to put it in cold-blooded economist terms. They're not producer goods you send out into the fields and factories to work for you and produce. Instead, they become consumer goods, as economists say. You lavish attention on them. You give them college educations. You send them to Disneyland. You buy them expensive new toys. So ironically, they become more expensive as we get wealthier. And we have less need of them to work for us. And we have social safety nets that also take care of us. So the incentive to have large families goes down and down. So we can see this deceleration in population growth clearly going on right now, and it's leveling out. Now, you don't have to take my word for it. Go look at the UN population projections. They have several different scenarios, a medium, low, and a high rate of decline. Going by the medium one, the UN estimates that population, global population will probably peak somewhere around 2080 to 2100, at maybe 10 billion people, and then start to decline. Now, they tend to overestimate population growth. So most likely, their low projection is the one that's more accurate. According to the low projection, populations should stop growing around 2040, 2050, not very far from now. 
with only maybe another billion people than we have today. And what's interesting about declining population is once it starts declining, it can plummet pretty scarily. It's not like population growth, which has certain limits to it. If people just stop having children, population can plummet. So that would provide a very strong incentive actually for cryonics to work, so we can start bringing people back and stopping, stopping the population from crashing too drastically. So really, cryonics is not a problem. It adds a trivial number of people, if it works at all, to the population. But in fact, we should really be worrying not so much about overpopulation, but in the next few decades, I think more and more we will realize that underpopulation is an issue. And doing something about aging will be critical. This is becoming very clear in places like Japan, where there are very few young people to take care of the older people. They have to invest in robots to take care of old people. Uh, there are fewer people working uh, and of healthy working age to pay for everybody in retirement. So it becomes ever more critical, in fact, to support life extension research and to help make sure that cryonics does work. This is Max Moore answering your questions about cryonics. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel for more information.